Our next speaker is my friend Jack Ma. And uh, I think everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows what he has accomplished so far. What we don't know is what he is going to do down the road. But um, this is one of those people that are transforming the world. And we're lucky to have him come. Jack? I'll wait until you speak, and then I'll come back on. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, um, Mr. President uh, Clinton, Mike, Your Excellencies, and friends. I'm very honored when Mike called me and said uh, there is a forum here in New York that to, to share our ideas and thinkings about the future. I'm ex extremely excited and honored. I'm not a politician. I'm not um, a scientist. I'm a business people. I would be very happy to share some of the thought that we as an entrepreneur, what we learn from our lives, what the things, what the attitude we should face for the future. And I think as entrepreneurs, we know very clearly that if we lose the leadership, if we lose our vision, our company will go nowhere. When my company is very tiny, we, every day we are looking for opportunities to make our company big. Now today my company is big. Every day I worry about uh, what are the risks, what are the things that are going to stop us, that's going to be the cancer of the company. And when we figure out the problems, we have to think about one thing, how we can change these problems, become opportunities. In this world, very, most of the people, by seeing is believing. But only those great leaders, when they see, when they believe the future, then they see the real stuff. So I think today people worry a lot, but I think we are much underestimate the, the huge technology revolution that it was going to bring to the world, the impact. We are entering the world that is uh, full of opportunities and full of challenges. And this kind of area in the human lives, we have seen very few of them. In, I think in the past 300 years, we only see three times. And I think the, big, the problem of today is so big and too big, now not even one government or any business can solve. So we have to work in together. If we do not work in together, I think the world is going to be more tough and much more frustration. The world is moving from IT to DT. A lot of people don't know what is DT, and it's just like a lot of people don't know what is IT. The IT information technology is shifting to the data technology. This is not about the technology upgrading. It's about the philosophy. It's about the way we're doing things. The world needs focus, used to focus on 20, 80%. They just focus on 20%. As I say, a lot of financial institutions, they focus on supporting 20% of the big companies and by making 80% of the profit. But the world should be 80, 20 in the future. We should focus on the 80% of small business, 80% of the young people, 80% of developing countries. And the world is looking for more inclusive, sustainable, and happy and healthy environment. I think the world not only need G20, B20, we need G200 and B200. And I think our kids also changed. The kids, they do not want to get involved. They want to be involved. In the past 200 years, we human beings, always want to use the knowledge to predict the future. But today, we are entering into a new world. Nobody is the expert of future. And we have a so limited knowledge about the digital time. So I think we are into entering a, a world that everybody starts to worry. And today, those people say, I believe the future. They're considered as uh, crazy guys. And also, I would like to say that people worry about the big data, artificial intelligence, and computing, and cloud computing, all these things. I think these worries are very normal. And when 200 years ago, the steam machine comes, people start to worry about that. They think the steam machine is going to take a lot of jobs. 100 years ago, when electricity comes, people worry about electricity is going to take a lot of jobs. But I believe human beings have solutions. If we don't have the solutions, our kids will have the solutions. In the past 10 years, just like our company, five years ago, we noticed that uh, a big debate in our company. We think the online shopping, the e-commerce was shifting from PC to mobile phone. Nobody believed because most of the people say, hey, Jack, how can you shopping on a mobile phone? The screen is so tiny. But we proved 
Today, 87% of the shops on our site are from the mobile phones, not because the screen is too shut, because our eyes is too shut. We are getting old. Young people never get old. <laughs> and we get used to the waiting for government to find the solutions, but actually the solutions are everywhere. The wisdom of human beings are everywhere. And I think we should, human beings should have confidence in ourselves and the, the new technology will destroy a lot of jobs, but also will create a lot of jobs. So when we start to lose vision, when we start to lose imagination, we start to worry. And I think because we lose the vision for future, because we don't have imagination, we start to worry too much about the future. Today we see the steam, the steam machines bring a lot of jobs for the, for the world, and electricity also bring a lot of jobs for the world. The DT, the data technology, is going to bring a lot of jobs for the world. The question is whether we are ready and whether we are qualified for these new jobs. And by the way, a lot of people talking about manufacturing. I think manufacturing will never bring a lot of jobs. In the last 200 years, manufacturing brings jobs. But today, because of the artificial intelligence, because of the robots, manufacturing is no longer being the, the, the main engine of creating jobs. Service industry is going to be the main driver for job creations. So talking about manufacturing, we should not talking about made in China, made in America, it's going to be made in internet. Most of the small business is going to be powerful. Most of the small business is going to be global. So in the past 30 years, 6% of the business in the world, big companies, they benefit from globalization. In the next 30 years, I believe and we believe from the data shows that all the small business will, at least 60% of the small business will, be global, will benefit from globalization. Globalization is nothing wrong. We need to improve globalization. We need to make sure globalization is inclusive. And people worry about the machine is going to control human beings. I think people should have confidence. Human beings should have the self-confidence. Human beings have the wisdom. Machine does not have the wisdom. We should never, I think we, uh, we should not think about artificial intelligence. We should talk about machine intelligence. I find a lot of scientists start to, start to think about the machine, think like a human brains. Humans only know less than 10% of human brains. If we want to make the machines think like men, we'll be in big troubles. So the other thing is that um, we will want, I don't like a lot of uh, scientists uh, and engineers talking about, it, it's the, the, the business leader, scare people away about the technology. I'm a non-technology guy. I've been, the only thing I know about a computer is send and receive email and browse. I don't know what is coding, but we can lead the technology. And uh, the, uh, the thing is that in the past 30 years, we make people like a machine. Next 30 years, we will make machine like a people. But the difference is that machine should be machine like, people should be people like. And talking about the uh, machine is going to be bigger, uh, is being smarter or powerful than, than human beings. This happens in the past 300 years. Machine always run faster, stronger than human beings. When computer is designed, we have to be sure that machine is going to be smart than human being. They remember because they never forget. They never get tired, they never sleep, never drinks. So this is the technology, unstoppable, unstoppable. And we should know that the machine does not have a heart. Machine does not have soul, and machine does not have a belief. Human beings have the souls, have the belief, have the value. We are creative. We are surely that we can control the machines. So the technology is unstoppable. We don't have the answer for the future, but there is answer for the future. That is why we should stop finger pointing each other by working together, solve the problem. So what is the ch solution for those challenges? I think we should change ourselves, embrace the future. Those people worry about tomorrow are those people who are successful and those people who are above 50 years old. It is so difficult. The most difficult thing in this world is to change a successful people. And the other thing is our young people never worry. Those people who are over 50 years old, they worry a lot. Young people never worry for the future. They worry about us. They worry about us that make the wrong policies, wrong decision, wrong judgment for the futures. So the best way to, to using the technology is using technology to solve the problems instead of stopping the technology. 
And the, I think uh, we, our generation, were lucky. We're about 50 years old, so next to 20 years, there's no big problem for us. But, but we should not make problems for our kids. And the, for the kids' issues, we have to pay special attention to the education system. This is everywhere I go to the different countries, talking to the statesmen, government officers. Pay attention to the education system. The way we teach, the things we teach today is, is going to be making our kids losing jobs the next 30 years. Because all the things we learn about remember knowledge, calculation, all these stuffs, machine can do better. We have to teach the kids that machine cannot do better like human beings. So this is what worried me for the President Macron talk about we should retrain our people. That's supporting the people like us today, 30, 40 years old. But what about our kids? So we have to rearrange the education. Because of artificial intelligence, because of machine learnings, because of computing, we have to change the education system, knowledge, and know-how. And by, by we have to teach our kids to be very, very um, innovative, very creative. In this way, we can create jobs for our kids. By the way, I think if you want in this world, IQ, EQ, and LQ. If you want to be successful, you should have IQ. But if, uh, you should have an EQ. If you don't want to lose quickly, you should have the EQ, or uh, IQ. But if you want to be respected, if you want to survive, keep on su successful, you should have, be, have the LQ. What is LQ? The Q of love which machine never have that. So, finally, by closing that, I think we, uh, we are optimistic as a business people. I'm optimistic, positive for the future, for the technology. But we also have to be very, very careful that the first technology revolution caused World War I. Second technology revolution caused World War II. Now we are the third technology revolution. The World War III should be against poverty, disease, and environment pollutions. Otherwise, human beings will have problems. This is what I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, thank you. Um, this is going to surprise everybody in this room, but I am a little on the other side of 50. My daughters are on the younger side of 50. Uh, when I listen to them, there are lots of simple solutions to complex problems. Unfortunately, they never seem to get there. I happen to be one of the people that agree, couldn't agree more with you. Uh, machines are not going to take over the world. It's judgment and understanding and treating people as human beings that really is what matters and it matters in business. And I was fascinated to learn that you had, in Amazon, you guys have created something like 30 million jobs have been responsible for that. That's really amazing. We have to do the same thing in our country. Um, there, uh, um, you are a special uh, amb ambassador to the UN on trade and small business and entrepreneurship. Uh, congratulations, the uh, new SG really needs some help and he is thrilled to have you, we talked about it. Uh, what do, when you meet all of these heads of states, what do you tell them? Yeah, I uh, think first when I go to a lot of countries, especially developing countries, the government has started to worry. Well, we don't have infrastructure of telecommunication. We don't have computers. We don't have this and that. So we cannot do internet. But I tell the internet is going to be the infrastructure. If we don't have the, if, if the people are not connected to the internet next to 30 years, it's just like 30 years ago, people are not connected to the electricity. Alibaba grow fast in the past 18 years. 18 years ago, there's no infrastructure of internet, of e-commerce in China. We build from scratches. So I'm telling a lot of governments and officials that pay special attention to the next 30 years. Every technology revolution takes about 50 years. The first 20 years about technology. Next 30 years about application of the technology. Electricity was not invented in America, it's invented in Europe. Cars was invented in Europe, not America. But America using cars, electricity, better than the Europe. So what I want to say, pay special attention to the next 30 years, making sure your people get rich to the internet, and internet can be, can be uh, the infrastructure of your country. And the second is uh, pay special attention to those people who are below 30 years old because they are the main driver for tomorrow. They have the confidence. And pay special attention to those companies who are young, uh, who have uh, less than 30 employees, because small business is going to be powerful. 
last century manufacturing make larger scale standard. And in the future, the world is shifting from standard, large mass, to the tailor-made, to the small size. So I'm a believer of small is beautiful and small is powerful. And lastly, how does business and government work together to bring innovation? What's the secret sauce? The different cultures, different ways of measuring success, different ways of getting promoted, different ways of getting compensated, and yet this conference is all about the fact that they just have to work together. And you have a very successful company in a country where the government is a communist government, um, and uh, how do you blend the two? You've got as much a problem as the rest of us have, not more. Yeah, I think first we, we should stop blaming each, uh, complaining each other. Government is always tried to, the, I think today a lot of government is worry more than the business. This is business, we, people like us, we are optimistic about the future. We think there is opportunity, that, that's that. Because there's worries, because there's complaints, there's opportunity. So our opportunity come from these complaints and these kind of worries. So the, if we do not work in together, there will be problem. There is a story I want to share with you in 1865, the UK had the first mobile came, the, the cars. A lot of it went to the government and said, wow, this is going to destroy a lot of jobs for the horseman because horseman at that time is a white collar job. It's a very skillful job. So they pushed the government and say, stop automobile, stop this. So the UK government at that time passed an act called Red Flag Act. Every car, there is a flag in the front. No car is allowed to drive seven miles per hour. No car is allowed to drive faster than a horse, man. That stopped, because if you drive your car faster than a horse, your license of, of automobile will be taken away. So this is called Red Flag Act. And I think today, a lot of governments is thinking about that making more acts because for they have a great heart say I want to help in create you know keeping this job by killing tomorrow so I think as a business people like us we have to tell the government what is the confidence what why we believe future is better and government should working with us listen to us and in this way we can build the future Listen, thank you very much. You've done an amazing things. Keep up the good work. And uh, we have a lot to learn from you. America has a lot to learn from China and vice versa. And I think the real message uh, from what's happening in the world today is we need each other more than ever before. And pulling countries apart just is not good for either, for any of the countries. The, the only ways we're going to grow is if everybody else grows. Thank you. We'll be right back with another great speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.